on the third day there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Now both Jesus and his disciples were invited to the wedding. And when they ran out of wine, the mother of Jesus said to him, they have, they have no wine. Jesus said to her, Woman, what does your concern have to do with me? My hour has not yet come. My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Whatever he says to you, do it. Whatever he says to you, no matter how unbelievable, no matter how unrealistic, whatever he says to you, do it. Verse 6 says, Now there was set there was set there six water pots of stone, according to the manner of purification of the Jews, containing twenty or thirty gallons apiece. Jesus said to them, Fill the water pot with water. Fill the water pot with water. This was the same man that said, My hour has not yet come. The same day. Now fill the water pot with water. And they filled them up to the brim. And he said to them, Draw some out. He didn't pour anything in it. He didn't have to touch it. He didn't have to speak to the water. He said, Draw some out now and take it to the master of the feast. And they took it. When the master of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine and did not know where it came from, but the servants who had drawn the water knew, the master of the feast called the bridegroom, the husband-to-be, and said, and he said to him, Every man at the beginning sets out the good wine, and when the guests have well drunk, then the inferior, you have kept the good wine until now. Hmm. This beginning, this beginning of signs Jesus did in Cana of Galilee and manifested his glory and his, and his disciples believed in him. I pray for you in the mighty name of Jesus that God Almighty, who has said probably has not answered one prayer or the other, because as hour has not come. And now today, we answer it in the mighty name of Jesus. The Bible says in the book of John chapter 18, chapter 8, please come with me to the book of John chapter 8 verse 12. Then Jesus spoke to them again, saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. We who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of the light of life. I want to assure you that the husband to be, the family that was getting married, they did what? Add wisdom by inviting the right people to their wedding. They invited the right people to their wedding. They followed Jesus. They invited the King of Kings to their wedding. The Bible did not record to us what happened. Maybe it was, it was the one that ministered. The Bible did not tell us. But he told us about a need at the wedding. He told us what could have put the couple to shame at the wedding. He told us what could have ended the wedding. He told us what calamity could have befallen the wedding to the point that nobody will remember the wedding at all. There could even be a problem between the husband and wife. Because the wife may be angry that how come, how come, how did you not buy enough? The couple that invited Jesus Christ to their wedding must have a good relationship with not just Jesus Christ, but the entire family. Why did I say that? Because the Bible recorded that his mother was at the party. So it was an affair of relationship. And how did I know they had good relationship? The woman wouldn't have said, what say when he went she went to her, 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 her son and said there is a need if there had not been good relationship there wouldn't have been anything like that the bible says i am the light of the world he who follows me shall not walk in darkness i pray that as you take decision this morning 
to start to follow Jesus afresh. You will never walk in darkness. Your family will never be in darkness. Your marriage will not be in darkness. In the mighty name of Jesus. Look at what happened. The disciples were even at the wedding. They all went together. It was what a family affair. It was a wedding, oh Lord, of good relationship with Jesus Christ. I want to ask you this afternoon. Are you inviting our Savior to your dinner today? To your Christmas dinner today? Have you prepared to wine and dine with him today? Our general overseer told us a story which will be familiar to people who listen to his messages. His family, he said, had a jug of tea which will always contain five full cups of tea, five full normal cups of tea. And usually he says he will take three cups and his wife will drink two cups. But this particular day, after they had prayed, he particularly has specified that God, come and dine with me. Come and eat with me. Come and drink with me. And he said, after he had taken his two cups, his wife took a cup, uh, two cups, and there was none left in the jug. So he was confused because he was at the table. He saw his wife, and his wife will never drink three cups of tea. Ah, and he said, he asked his wife anyway to confirm, to say, how many cups did you drink? And she said, I, I mean, as usual, I drank two. And he said he had God saying, but you invited me to the two. But this 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 uh, i mean so a, a someone that is not even a christian people will ask the question how is this even possible how can jesus drink tea how possible and this is where i'm going this this morning that this season and onward god needs you to trust and to believe in him completely there are some things that God wants you to, to, to take on board. There are a few things that God will be asking you to do from now. That he wants you to do it and he wants you to, to bring solution to, to what you are going through. And he wants you to completely trust and believe him forever. I want you to know that there was chaos at the wedding. And I want you to know that chaos is not strange to the chaos killer. Because Jesus is the storm suppressor. He's the chaos killer. So chaos is not what is not it's not strange to him. The one who can suppress storm, the one that wins battle all the time. I want us to look at verse 4. What verse 4 of what we read says? The Bible says, Jesus said to her, Woman, what does your concern have to do with me? My hour has not yet come. My hour has not yet come. These people they ran out of water, I ran out of drink. We're out of wine. But God has set an advocate. God has set an announcer of glory, grace and glory. God has set a, 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 the, the eye opener in person of Mary, Jesus' mother. She said to them, to her son, they, 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 are, they have no more wine. And uh, you know this can be scary for the husband to be, to see what are we going to do now. This will have bring some, something they call pandemonium. This may, may turn the, the party around and make people to now say, you know what, we are going. We are going, we don't want to, to be part of this anymore. The, but the Bible said, Jesus said, my hour has come. There is nothing I can do. That is what it means. There is nothing I can do in this situation. There is no more wine. Don't forget, before this time, he had never done anything. He had never done any, any miracle. He had never performed no miracle. This was his first miracle that day. His mother said to the, to the disciples, don't worry, whatever he says to you, just do it. And what this means is that whatever comes out of Jesus' mouth, you must believe it and do it. So for you to do something, you will have to believe it first. So the woman told them, you have to do what? You have to just do whatever he says to you. That means that don't mind in it, don't dissect it, don't believe, don't just look into how how it, how possible it is. And this morning, I want to tell you that there are some things that God will be telling you from now, from 2022, that may look unrealistic, 
there are few things that God may look will do to you, may speak to you, that you may look at it and it becomes un un unbelievable. If we have a baby, for instance, who is coughing, God may tell you, just get up, go and take anointing oil, put anointing oil in the water, drop honey in that water, and just mix it together and give it to these babies to drink. You will be dissecting it. You will be thinking, who is speaking to you? You will be thinking, no, 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 no. That is not, no, in this country, we don't do that. If I get this baby to the hospital, I will be sued. If I get this baby to the hospital, I will be in trouble. God may tell you, somebody that has just, has a sore on the leg, God may just tell you, no, go and wash it and just put anointing oil on it. And that is it. But you will have to believe God to the point of doing it. Without it, you may, it will look unbelievable to you. It will look like it wasn't Jesus telling you. That is why we are going to be very familiar with our God this year. We are going to be very close to him. We are going to follow him. So that when he's telling us some few things, we are going to take them on board by the grace of God in the name of Jesus. Verse 7 says, let's look at what our verse 7 says. Verse 7 says, Jesus said to them, Fill the water pot with water. What has no more wine got to do with fill the water pots? But because his mother had earlier told them, whatever he asks you to do, make sure you do it. Make sure you do everything that he asks you to do. What has the water pot got to do with wine? But because he knows the end from the beginning, he determines solution even before the problem arises. <laughs> so I know it is now time for myself and yourself to be more sensitive, to listen to him, and to trust him completely. The Bible, let's look at what the Bible says in the book of Proverbs, chapter 3, verses 4 to 5. Let's look at what the Bible says in the book of Proverbs, chapter 3. And this is verses 4 and 5. Verses 4 and 5. Verses 4 and 5. The Bible says... Sorry. You know, Proverbs chapter 3. I'm looking at the version I'm reading. And 4 and 5. The Bible says, And so find...